What's up guys, thanks for coming to Gaming Canada with me. I decided to go ahead and do the Wii U Wednesday, so this is This Week in Homebrew Wii U number one. Keep watching. For the first story, we're over here on GitLab.com, and this is a repository created by Ash, aka Quark the Awesome, and it is for Linux Wii U, which is a port of Linux 4.11.6 to the Wii U's bare metal. Now it was only a matter of time before someone ported Linux over to the Wii U and created a little computer, but Quark was the first one to do it. Now what's cool about this is we could potentially port over some Raspbian Linux emulators to work on the Wii U and maybe give us a little bit more emulator support. Although that's probably not something that's going to happen tomorrow and it might require some more optimization of Linux Wii U. I'm definitely going to be doing a video on this in the near future so make sure you keep your eye out for that. Just real quick, I'm going to go over the device support. So while in Linux Wii U, you have USB support, the back ports only, SD card access. One that I'm really stoked on is Bluetooth. You could tether a phone to get internet on your Wii U while in Linux. That is <laughs> pretty wild. And two gigs of RAM has been utilized from the ARM. Potentially core zero of the PowerPC cores is available as well. And both interrupt controllers, which I have no idea what that is, but this is a big deal for us. If you guys are stoked on Linux Wii U, then go down to the comments and let me know. I think this is pretty darn cool. Up next is Mario Making Mods or MarioMods.net. I'll just go ahead and tell you what they're all about here. We are a community dedicated to bringing you a home for the hacking of Super Mario Maker, both the Wii U and the 3DS edition. Our community is a place for everyone to post their projects, get help, and support and find tutorials. Join us and share your very own creations or feel free to just browse the site and check out some of the awesome projects and tutorials found here. We have all sorts of crazy mods for Super Mario Maker ranging from Super Mario Odyssey in 8-bit style to our new 32-bit series of custom themes. Whatever you're interested in, you might find it in our depot. Head over to the depot. We have download links to some of the best mods out there for Super Mario Maker and a great tutorial for newcomers. So if you guys are interested in modding Super Mario Maker, then you're definitely going to want to head over to MarioMods.net and join their forum. Up next, we're over on a blog post called Anatomy of a Wii U The End. Now this is basically a write-up about a boot 1 exploit. Now there is the boot 0 and the boot 1. Currently the boot 0 has been examined a lot. And the best exploit that we can achieve through exploiting boot 0 is cold boot Haxchi. Now boot 1, although being dumped now, has not really been poked through and we're not too sure if there is another kind of exploit inside of it that could be better than cold boot Haxchi. This article goes over a quick little exploit that does exist, but in the end, it seems to be equal to Cold Boot Haxchi, according to Quark the Awesome over here. Quark seems to be making it into this episode a heck of a lot. Shout out to Quark for still working on the Wii U. He says, The nice thing about this is being able to dump Boot 1. While it's certainly no key, we actually have the binaries now and can look for other bugs in it. The bugs explained in the post is cool and all, but it's not really an improvement over Cold Boot Haxchi as a Cold Boot exploit. So as you guys can see, there is possibly still a better exploit than Cold Boot Haxchi in the works somewhere if somebody can figure it out. Up next, we have a custom eShop proof of concept by Red Ducks. As you can see, he's going to build his own eShop with blackjack and hookers. I'm not sure exactly what this is all about, but I do believe maybe in the near future you could access some sort of custom eShop from your hacked Wii U. That would be pretty darn awesome once the end of life for the Wii U happens and you can no longer download anything from the eShop. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Up next, we're over on GBA Temp, and this is a release thread by Slothwee Plaza for Minecraft Wii U Mod Injector slash Trainer release. Now, this is essentially going to allow you to add cheats to Minecraft for the Wii U. I'm honestly not too sure how useful this is at the end of the day, but if you guys want to check it out, here it is. Up next, we're over on Yam Gaming's channel, one of my favorite YouTube channels, just makes absolutely beautiful videos about Breath of the Wild. And this is a mod video where you can play as Luffy from One Piece. Now, it is pretty awesome. You can see he actually has his hat on his back, and I'm going to skip ahead here and show you a couple of little attacks that he does with the hat. So here he is from the front. You can actually see the straw hat actually comes up on the camera. 
Here he is throwing his hat like a boomerang at this stone talus. Absolutely awesome. Still over here on Yam's channel. And this is playing as Midioria from Boku no Hero Academia. Over here on the Complaining Gamers channel. Now you might remember I featured this Toon Link mod for Breath of the Wild. Now you can change the giant horse into the King of Red Lions. And he looks absolutely awesome. The animations are there and everything. Now you can actually take this horse into the water and just fly around with it. Look at this. It is just like playing Wind Waker. Absolutely so cool. So here you can take the horse out and as you can see it's actually the Ganon horse. So you can go ahead and get the giant horse out and bada boom bada bing. It's actually the King of Red Lions and it walks around. Absolutely wild. One of the last mods is actually a Breath of the Wild Xbox or PlayStation controller replacement. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of screenshots from this. As you can see, here's the B button within the game replaced with the Xbox B button. If we scroll down a bit, the actual Wii U Pro controller is replaced completely by the Xbox controller layout. There is the Western layout, which swaps the A and B buttons. Now there's also the PE layout which swaps the A and B buttons as well as the X and Y buttons. If you guys were interested in doing a controller mod for your game, then go ahead and head over to BSOD's channel and learn how to do this within CMU Emulator. He's actually got a great little tutorial vid, super easy to follow. All you have to do is replace a couple of files. Last but absolutely not least is the Wii U emulator known as Seamu. Now it has actually gotten two releases lately, 1.11.3 as well as this most recent release 1.11.4 which just came out earlier. So with the last two releases of Seamu there has been an experimental new option put into it known as the dual or the triple recompiler and this allows you to basically utilize your cores of your CPU a lot better. So if you have been not trying out CMU because no games worked on your PC or your laptop in recent releases, you're definitely going to want to try out 1.11.4 because I've seen stuff like this, a Rager Edge Pro tablet running 11.4 of CMU and it's playing Breath of the Wild. This guy basically has his own little switch on a tablet. Now obviously it's not running perfect, but look at this. This is running better than it used to run on people's really amazing computers. Simu has come a really far way in just a year, maybe just a little bit more. I guess it's actually been less than a year because Breath of the Wild only just came out last year, didn't it? Oh my god. If you guys are interested in running Simu 1.11.4 and you want to update to some new graphics packs that aren't broken in Zelda Breath of the Wild, guys, make sure you subscribe to BSOD Gaming if you haven't already, as well as the Complaining Gamer. Whenever anything Simu related comes out or Breath of the Wild, they make great videos covering it all. Often with Simu updates or with Zelda Breath of the Wild updates themselves, graphics packs and trainers and all sorts of things all get broken and you often have to wait for fixes. BSOD Gaming and the Complaining Gamer always come at you with those fixes. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this week in Homebrew Wii U number one. There wasn't a ton of stuff, but I managed to squeeze in some things there. It's helpful having CMU mods to fill up a little bit of time. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you guys want to give this video a thumbs up, but if you wanted to give it a thumbs down, I really couldn't stop you. If you wanted to subscribe to the channel for more videos, again, you could probably do that as well. Much love. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.